Hello students, in our assertion and reasoning series, in today's discussion, we'll take electrostatics chapter. We'll discuss assertion and reasoning type questions on electrostatics. Uh, in our previous discussion, we have seen uh, what are assertion and reasoning type questions, what is the normal way the students uh, take to solve such questions there, and uh, what are the things which they should avoid. And what is the systematic and uh, scientific approach to deal with assertion and reasoning type questions? You can refer to our previous uh, discussion on this topic. And then you will get a proper idea how you should attempt that. So let's now start today's discussion on electrostatics. Let's now take question number 11. Now again, we'll see uh, what are the options there. First option is that assertion and reason both are correct statement. Reason is the correct explanation. Second one is assertion and reason both true, but uh, reason is not the correct explanation. Third one is assertion is correct, but reason is false. And the fourth one is assertion and reason both are false statement. Now here in this particular question, you see the fourth option is different from the other questions which we have done so far. So basically, that is why we say that uh, if for a particular question, you have been given different options there, definitely in that case, you go for all the options there. Suppose in a particular examination paper, if it is given that from question number 14 to question number 19, the different options which are given is like this, like uh, assertion reason both true or reason is the correct explanation like that. And then answer the following question. So it means whatever options are given in the beginning and you know that it is applicable for all. So you need not go for this particular part of reading the options again for each question. But suppose for question number 14 to 19 for each individual question, Apart from the assertion and reason, they have given the options. This is how it is there in the CBSE sample paper, which was released recently. For each individual question, they have given the option. So there you have to be a bit careful. Okay, so let's now come back to the question. Assertion is uh, in a non-uniform electric field, a dipole will have the translatory as well as rotatory motion. In non-uniform electric field, dipole will have the translatory as well as rotatory motion. This is true because uh, if it is non-uniform, in that case, there will be net force there. And if there is net force there on the dipole, definitely it will have the translatory motion. And uh, if it is kept in the electric field, the dipole will definitely experience a torque there. And what about the region there? In non-uniform electric field, dipole experiences torque only. Now, this is false because just now in the first part, we have said that it is experiencing translatory as well as rotatory motion. So how it will experience translatory once there is some net force there? If it is having rotatory motion, obviously it means there is some torque acting there. And it is saying that in non-uniform electric field, dipole is only experiencing torque, so obviously it is false. That means the third option is the correct one. Let's now take next question. Again, uh, for this question, first, second options are same. Third one is the assertion correct, reason false. And the fourth one, both are wrong statements. Okay, charge is quantized course, this is a correct statement. That is the quantization of the charge. That is the basic property of the charge there. That charge possessed by a body is integral multiple of certain minimum charge there. What we represent it as your Q equals to Ne. Okay. So it is the charge which is quantized. Second is charging is because of the transfer of integral number of protons and electrons. Now here, this part, it is saying that it is due to the transfer of 
integral number of electrons and protons. Electron will definitely be transferred. It is basically charging on the body is only due to the transfer of the electrons there. So it is not for the protons. Protons are bound to the system there or the crystal there into iron ionic core there. So obviously it is the transfer of the electrons there that is also free electrons. So obviously this is false. And if assertion is true, reason is false, that means the third option is the correct one. Let's take now the question number 13. Again for this particular question, uh, as assertion and uh, reason both are wrong statement, the fourth one, third one is assertion is correct and reason is uh, wrong, that is the third one. Okay, so it is the same uh, one. A charged particle free to move in electric field move along an electric field line. Is it there that a charged particle free to move in electric field always move along the electric field lines? This will be there because if you have a charged particle, it will experience force due to electric field. But here it will move in the direction of the electric field only if it was a static charge. It will start with that. If you have a moving charge there and suppose electric field is acting, what will be its path? It will depend upon the direction of the electric field also there. So in that case, this is not a correct statement. So this is false. And the second one is that electric field lines uh, diverge from the negative charge and converge at a positive charge. This is also false because the electric lines of forces originate from the positive charge and terminate on negative. So they will be there diverging from positive charge and converging on the negative charge. So here assertion and reason both are false. That means it is the fourth option which is the correct one. Let's now take the next one. Fourth one. Again, uh, first, second is the same. Third one is also same. Correct assertion, correct statement. Reason is a uh, wrong statement. And the fourth one, assertion, reason, both are false statement. Now, let's come back to the assertion. If an electron and proton possessing same kinetic energy enter an electric field, in a perpendicular direction, the path of the electron is more curved than that of the proton. First of all, let's take uh, what is the expression for the energy which is possessed by them. It is your E into V and this will be equal to half mv square because this will be the kinetic energy. So if I take here, uh, suppose I write it two times Ev this is your mv square. I need the centripetal force there. And uh, if you take the centripetal force, it is your mv square by r. That means I need to divide it by r. So now this is the centripetal force. And if this is the centripetal force, now let's see. Electron and protons are having the same kinetic energy. That means the numerator part is constant. Clear? In that case, the path of the electron is more curved than that of the proton. Here, this is the force. And this force expression is your kinetic, two times kinetic energy by radius of the path. Now, if numerator is same, here it is R term there. So, obviously, it is not depending whether it is the uh, electron or proton, what is the mass and other. So obviously this is false. It will be same. And second one is that electron has larger curve due to a small mass. Again, once we say that it is independent of the mass term there, so obviously this is also false. So in this particular case, Again, the fourth one will be the correct option. Now, let's take the next question. Again, for this particular question, uh, 
it is the same options there third one is the same correct statement and assertion is wrong and fourth one both are wrong okay assertion is on moving away from a point charge or an electric dipole electric field decreases at the same rate in both cases on moving away from a point charge or an electric dipole electric field decreases at the same rate in both the cases now electric field due to point charge you know that it is proportional to 1 by r square that means it is inversely proportional to square of the distance but for the electric dipole it is proportional to 1 by r cube now how it will become uh, correct because once if i take dimensionally a left hand side is same electric field and if it is same electric field is there dimension is same on right hand side you have 1 by r square dimension if i take it is l power minus 2 and uh, for the dipole it is l power minus 3 so will it be dimensionally correct yes it is dimensionally correct because in this case of the point charge there is a charge term in the numerator apart from the constant it is your k q by r square but here if i take there apart from the constant it is your dipole moment so it is your dipole moment term is there divided by r q and dipole moment has the term of 2 q l value there so in that particular case there definitely one length term is there in the numerator and other is here so obviously it will get cancelled and dimensionally it will be the same quantity or same so obviously here i can say that it is false and now what is uh, here in the reason electric field is inversely proportional to a square of the distance from the charge on or, or on electric dipole this is also false because electric field is inversely proportional to a square of the distance from the charge but for the dipole there it is inversely proportional to cube of the distance so this is also false that means the fourth one is the correct option next question again uh, the different options which are there it is same what we have done in the previous question because the third one is uh, saying that assertion is uh, correct statement uh, but reason is uh, wrong fourth one is assertion and reason both are wrong statement now let's uh, go for the statement of the assertion two adjacent spherical conductor carrying same positive charge have a potential difference between them if i take the potential of a conductor in that case it is your k q by r Q is the charge on the conductor and R is its uh, radius there. So, if it is given same positive charge on the two adjacent spherical conductor, in that particular case, there may be potential difference because they may be having different radii. So, in that case, this statement is a correct statement. It is true. Now, let's take the reason now. The potential to which the conductor is raised depends upon the charge. This is also correct because uh, V is proportional to Q. So here this is true. But now let's uh, read out the assertion and reason together. Two adjacent spherical conductors carrying the same positive charge have a potential difference between them because the potential to which the conductor is raised depends upon the charge. Here it is not explaining how then there will be potential difference. Because if we say that potential is there, which is depending upon charge, same charge has been given and is still in the first part we say that there is potential difference. So that means here assertion and reason both are correct, but reason is not the correct explanation for the assertion entire part it is not explaining how then there will be a potential difference so in that case the second one is the correct option let's take now the next question 
again it is the same options there let's take the assertion charge never flow from a condenser of high capacity to a condenser of low capacity remember the flow of charge is from a point of high potential to a point of low potential it has nothing to do with the capacitance or the capacity of the conductor there but it is not that conductor who which has high capacity the charge will not flow from that to a body of low capacity or a conductor of low capacity it can flow if the potential is high this statement if you see that charge never flow from a condenser of high capacity to a condenser of low capacity is a false one it can flow basically it will depend upon the point having high potential to a point having low potential or a conductor having high potential to conductor having low potential and if the capacity is more it may be that its potential is also more but of course it is not always true that the body which has a high capacity will also have the high potential but if we say that it is never possible this is wrong statement it is possible the flow of charge reason if you take flow of charge between two bodies connected by a thin wire is determined by the charge on them obviously this is again a false statement because the flow of the charge will depend upon the potential not on the quantity of the charge so this is also false obviously in this case if the assertion and reason both are false the fourth one is the correct option Let's take the next question. Again, it is the same uh, options there. The assertion is, in absence of an externally applied electric field, the displacement per unit volume of a polar dielectric material is always zero. This is true. If you have no elect external electric field applied to a polar dielectric medium, the net displacement per unit volume will be always true. This is, will be always zero. That is true. And the uh, reason is, in polar dielectric, each molecule has a permanent dipole moment. That is true. But these are randomly arranged in absence of the externally applied field. Remember, each dipole or there of the polar dielectric there, they will have their dipole moment but in absence of the electric field they are arranged randomly so that the net value becomes zero so this is also true now let's just read out uh, once again to decide whether it is the first option is correct or the second one in the absence of an externally applied electric field the displacement per unit volume of a polar dielectric material is always zero because in polar dielectric each molecule has a permanent dipole moment, but they are randomly oriented in the absence of externally applied field. This is a complete explanation of the assertion. So obviously, the first one is the correct option because it is uh, explaining it correctly. Let's take the next question. Again, the same options are there. Assertion is, uh, if a dielectric is placed in external field, then field inside dielectric will be less than applied field. We are keeping our dielectric in an external electric field. And if you consider, like suppose you have an electric field in this direction, and uh, suppose this is your E0, and this is the dielectric which is kept there. So obviously in this case, there will be polarization and in that case there will be a field set up there in opposite direction by this dielectric suppose it is your uh, e dash so the net electric field will be your e naught minus e dash so obviously it will be less there to the applied field because there is a positive field set up there so this is true now the reason is electric field will induce dipole moment 
opposite to the field direction. Now, this one, if you consider, electric field will induce dipole moment opposite to the field direction. This is not correct. This is false. Because here, electric field will induce dipole moment opposite to the field direction. Here, net field is there, but the induction which will be there, that will be there in which direction? That will be in the same direction. So, if assertion is uh, true, reason is false, that means this is the third option which is correct. So, in this question, it is the third option which is correct. Let's take the last question. Again, all the options are same, assertion, reason, uh, both are correct, uh, reason is the correct explanation, the first option, second one is that assertion is and reason both are correct and reason is correct explanation, third one assertion is correct, reason is false and the fourth one both are false. The statement of the assertion is acceleration of a charged particle in non-uniform electric field does not depend upon the velocity of the charged particle. Acceleration does not depend upon the velocity of the charged particle. On the charged particle, the acceleration will be there, which is basically force by mass and how much will be the force E, E. So, divided by mass, that will be your acceleration. Now, it is not having any term which shows the dependency on the velocity. So, this is true. And now let's take uh, the second one. Charge is an invariant quantity. That is, amount of charge on the particle does not depend upon the frame of reference. This is also true because this is one of the property of the charge. Charges are invariant. But uh, is it explaining uh, that particular part there? Let's see that acceleration of charged particle in a non-uniform electric field does not depend on velocity of the charged particle because charge is an invariant quantity. That is the amount of charge on the particle does not depend upon the frame of reference. It is explaining in terms of the frame of reference but not in terms of the acceleration there in non-uniform electric field if it is applied there. So, this reason is not explaining about the acceleration of the charged particle dependence in non-uniform electric field on velocity. That why it should not depend upon that. So, obviously, second one will be the correct option. So, in this case, the second one is the correct option. So, these were uh, some of the questions on electrostatics on which we have discussed the assertion and reasoning type questions there. In our next discussion uh, on this assertion and reasoning series, we will discuss uh, questions there on current electricity.